Hello everyone and welcome to Born to Prosper. This is Rachel Kreider. We are streaming to you live from Chile, just outside of Santiago. This episode, episode number three of the Born to Prosper show, how to find happiness. Well, gang, welcome back. Uh, episode number three. Today, it's all about happiness. So let's get into it. What do a 19th century philosopher, a 20th century footy coach and a 21st century best-selling author all believe to be the difference maker in creating this fabulous life and attaining happiness in one's life? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Allow me to bring out our main host of the Born to Prosper show, Mr. Shane Kreider. Come on, Shane. All right. Thanks for that, Rach. Very excited to be here. And uh, just a big welcome to everybody. Um, yeah, you know what? What do all those people, uh, you know, I have no idea and I can't wait to find out. We've got a we've got a great little program, I think, lined up for you guys. If you guys are serious about taking your business and your success to the next level, well, this is something that can possibly help you to do it. And so with that, let's go ahead and rock and roll here. Um, let's see. All right. Just give me a minute. Well, here while to, he's uh, getting organized, I want to, uh, I'd love to hear from people who have, I guess where you're, where you're chiming in from, uh, I'm, I'm meeting people from all over the world. Some of you guys send me little private messages, whether it be up on Facebook or through my email. And I'm hearing from people who I haven't heard from in a really long time, which is just so awesome. And it's great. So, um, and I know that there's more and more countries streaming in. This is our third episode and we are, as we said, streaming live literally right around the world, the wonders of modern technology. So as he's getting himself organized, um, we would love to hear from you guys on any of our channels, whether it be the blog or on YouTube, um, go ahead and uh, and communicate up. It'd be great. Awesome, awesome, absolutely. Love to hear from you guys. And with that, so let's. I just want to go ahead and, and just rock and roll right into this. We've got some pretty cool stuff I think to share with you on this call. Uh, you know, so um, how to how to find happiness, Rach? How? Well, number one, I guess how does a person actually find happiness? Um, number two, what is it that, uh, well, why is it, why is it worth, why, why is it, why is it really worth finding happiness? That's something that we're going to discuss in this conversation. So how to and why? Yeah. Why, why, why should you go for it? I mean, you know, is life really that bad when you're not happy having fun? Well, from where I'm sitting, it is. Um, I've, I've had all experiences on all sides of my life with, with respect to fun and happiness. So uh, I think it's worth it, but we're going to talk about why it's worth it. And, um, and we're going to share with you guys some insights from a few different people around the world from different time periods on this subject and kind of some, some maybe behind the scenes sort of uh, point of view that, that maybe even if you're somebody that's a bit of a student of personal development may not have um, really come up with. So with that, first thing I want to cover here is vigilance drive. Now here's an interesting concept. Uh being vigilant. Rach, what is what does being vigilant mean? It means putting you that on the spot here. Ra Rach <laughs> loves it when I when I put her on the spot. You're just going for it, aren't you? You're you're just you're you're going for it. You're you're yeah, you're out there, you're um you've got a vision and you're not stopping until you you create that vision for yourself, even in the face of adversity adversity. 
Is that vigilance? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It, well, it, vigilant to me just means that you're aware, you're awake, you know what the heck is going on. You're on purpose. You know, if you're walking down the street um, and, you know, you can be walking down the street with your spouse, right? And you're cruising along, you're having a conversation and possibly you're also looking on your cell phone. And let's say that there's somebody up the street that's looking for somebody to mug. Well, if you're totally in your own little bubble, you, you look a lot like a victim to this person probably. But if your head is up, you're maybe looking at your phone, but you're looking at your spouse and then you're, you're also looking around and you're aware of your, you are aware of your surrounding, your surroundings, gotcha. right? Yep. And you spot the guy up the street that's kind of scoping everybody out. You don't necessarily think anything, but you see him and he sees you see him mm -hmm. or be politically correct. Maybe the mugger is a female. Yep. Equal opportunity muggers. <laughs> so maybe you see her and you're like, ah, she looks like she's up to no good. But anyways, you're not, you're not a victim though. So you're not afraid. You're just kind of cruising down the road and you're noticing if you're the, if you're the mugger, male or female, you're probably thinking, ah, maybe I'll wait for the next people who are going to come by who just have absolutely no clue what the hell is going on in the world. And I'm going to catch them by surprise. Catching people by surprise seems to be the thing to do when you're looking to take advantage. Okay. So vigilance um, is more so, I mean, you are on purpose, but you're consciously aware of what's going on. So you, I'd say you're in tune. Yeah. I would say so. Yep, okay. Yep, I've got a question. Are you putting both of us on the screen at the same time? Does this do that? Or do, is there only one of us on the screen at any one time? There's only one. And oh. you can see it right there in front of us. <laughs> All right. I was just <laughs> curious. And you know what? I, what I meant about where are you? Whoops. Where are you guys calling in from or streaming in from or watching anyway? You know what I mean? Um, a whole bunch of messages come up on my Skype, which is awesome. But I didn't finish my point. I was looking for you guys to tell me on the YouTube channel or the blog where you're streaming in from so that uh, we can get a bit of activity happening there. That would be awesome. <laughs> send, send them up on Skype too. Uh, I love to hear from all of you guys. But um, anyway, back to you, Kreider. Okay, very cool. So uh, vigilance. vigilance, vigilance drive. Check out that picture. This reminds me of the last job I had. I, I can't, here, let me, let me move out of the way. So you can see the, uh, what is that, like a baseball bat with, or a board with a nail, you know, and there's the boss riding on your back, dangling the carrot. In front right. Of I don't know why that reminds me of jobs that I've had. So, uh, so vigilance drive. This this is an interesting concept when it comes to being happy because Rach, why is it that people aren't necessarily? Why is it that people don't necessarily feel happy? I mean, when you're when you're in a position um, to be happy. Okay, so you wake up in the morning and you're happy today, mm -hmm. and you should be happy all day, right? But things, what what how, I mean, what 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 takes us out of our our little happy zone, our little our little happy spot. I guess if you feel like you're not achieving, if you've, if you've lost track or, or maybe you're not actually yet in tune with your overall purpose and what you're here to do, uh, you feel a little lost. Um, yeah, you could feel, yeah, you, I don't know, you'd, you'd have a sense of uh, something missing inside which would cause, what are you doing? <laughs> you'd have I, I don't know if you guys can see him or me right now. I'm a little bit confused with what's going on with this stream. The, the screen on the right, Rach, for you is, is the one that's on, on the air. The other screen is, is, oh, so, uh -huh. is the one that's not on the air, and that's the one I'm pulling shenanigans gotcha. on. Gotcha, okay. If, uh, so, <laughs> at least he showed up on time today. He didn't sort of exit uh, just before we got started, which was a better start. Thank you. I can't remember the question. What was the question? So why, 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 some, why, why wouldn't, yeah. Why, why does somebody, you wake up in the morning and why is it that uh, maybe you're not, um, I think wh if you've why, got how do you get out of the happy, what takes you out of the happy zone? Uh, the only thing that comes to mind right now is like husbands, <laughs> but that's not, that's, I was just, that's not quite, <laughs> or wives, you know, <laughs> depending on who you are. Significant others. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, so here's the point. Other people. <laughs> so here's here's the point. Let me just get this out here so we can uh, get the train on the train. Well, the train's not even on the tracks right now. Okay. Apologize, guys. We're we're all over the place. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think if it wasn't for so and so, I could just be freaking happy. If I wasn't for so and so, I could actually be successful. If it wasn't for there's always seems to be somebody else or something else. If it wasn't for the economy, if it wasn't for whoever the president is, if it wasn't for whoever is running for president, I mean, there's always something external that we point to. So if it wasn't for that, I could be happy. And here's something that I've noticed with that. Why is it? It's like we all want to live in our little safe places, right? 
We just want to be in our safe little zone where we don't really have to. I mean, here's what I think. I think I should just be able to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, and never have to worry about anything. I think that in an ideal situation that there's no economic crisis, there's no, there's nothing out to get me, there's nothing I need to stay ahead of, there's no disease, there's no illness, nobody's starving in this world. You know, I'm in a happy zone. Don't tell me about the starving people because it's just going to irritate me and make me feel like I actually need to do something. So in an ideal situation, there's none of that going on, right? Mm -hmm. And man, you could just be happy and do nothing and be happy to do nothing or you could do something and all that, right? Um, That's not the way the world appears to work. So, you know, we can, we can, I guess we can hope that in our next life, if there is such a thing that we're born in a fairy tale, Or we can realize that that's not the way the world works. The way the world works is we have to be vigilant to stay alive. We have to be vigilant to stay just, just to live to, you know, I mean, you can be, you can be happy out there grazing in the herd. Um, and you can be ignorance. Ignorance is bliss, right? You don't know. All of a sudden the vigilant animals realize that the wolf is circling, right? And, uh, and what the vigilant animals do is they run away and what you do because you just want to be happy is, um, you linger, you just sit there and you're in your own little world and you do, you don't get out of the way. Right. Mm-hmm. See that the universe requires us to be vigilant. It, it's just a fact of life, but see the way we're raised. It's if you go to school, you get the right education, you get the good grades. Here's the things you need to do. And if you do these things, Somebody else, something else, you're going to be taken care of, man. You don't have to worry about anything. You do these things and it's all good. You don't have anything to worry about. You're, you're going to be taken care of. But then we get out into the real world and that's not the way it works. You know, you, the boss says, if you just do this and this and this, then you're going to get the raise, you're going to get the promotion and you do those things maybe. But let's say, let's pretend like you did do those, do those things. For all of you guys that didn't do those things, you know, you could probably pat yourself on the back because you probably just saved yourself a lot of grief. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that have achieved the goals that have been set out for them within their companies. And as soon as they, uh, as soon as they really achieve these goals and they hit the next stage of their compensation plan or get the promotion or whatever, what ends up happening is what they get their pay cut. They, they, um, whatever, what, what happened to you, Rach, with that? The commission component was pulled from the package. So I was in a sales role earning six figures plus and uh, majority of that um, result was from commission and a new manager came in and said, well, as of next week, very sudden, um, no more commission. And it's like, wow, it was like more than a 50% pay cut, well, well over 50% pay cut. So I left the company and went into business for myself. That's unbelievable, but it's a bit of a shock when that happens to you. Yeah. And you can, and people actually feel like there's an injustice that's created. And maybe there is, maybe there isn't. That isn't the point of this conversation. The point of this conversation is stuff happens. Yeah. Stuff happens all the time. Well, in hindsight, it was like the best thing that could have happened because it fulfilled a, a dream of mine like forever. Since I can remember, I'd wanted to go into business for myself, but I'd lacked the courage, lacked the uh, the vision, um, lacked the belief that I could do it. And then that was a big driving force. Um, I kind of wanted to stick it to the boss. Initially, that was a big, <laughs> a big driving force of me getting started in business um, that eventually changed to something bigger in terms of my own vision and not just, you know, wanting to succeed because of what he he'd done uh, but it was like years later I'm like you know what absolutely the best thing that uh, that could have happened in terms of the commission being pulled yep but that's in hindsight that's, like, yeah, that's when it hindsight. happened you were like what and I'm sure the the conversation was, you had with your friends was a little bit different than uh, yeah you know I think this is just the best thing that's just ever happened to me I'm so pleased yeah no I was devastated to send these guys a card yeah I was devastated heartbroken all that so vigilance drive in life, we are going to, and this is the key. I'm starting out with a big key here. Normally I would keep it to the end, but I want you guys to, I want this concept to be reinforced through the whole conversation. Vigilance drive. We will all be driven into vigilance. What's going to be your driving force into vigilance? And the three questions that, uh, that, that we sort of, or the, the three, the three people, the, the 19th century, Philosopher, uh, philosopher who actually I looked again and it's early 20th century is oh, a little is bit, a little bit, a little bit off with that. So you guys are going to, uh, you guys are going to bust me on that. Um, see, I, I strategically build in things into these presentations. So you guys, if you're paying attention, 
you'll be able to bust me. <laughs> and if you guys believe that. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, the, 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 the 19th slash 20th century philosopher. The footy coach. The 20th century football coach. We, oh. It's football in America. I'm talking about American football. And the, uh, the 21st but century. Best-selling author. Best-selling author. What are these three people? We're going to get into that. But I want that to reinforce this. So the, so the vigilance drive. We are either going to be, and this is just a fact that we should wake up and recognize. This is the fact that we should teach our kids. This is a fact that everybody that's in college or high school should be just wake up to and confront. Life is going to drive us into a vigilant state. You do not stay alive. You do not stay successful if you do not find a way to stay vigilant. How do you know if you're vigilant or not? Hmm. That's a good question. What do you think? I think you're getting ahead of me. That's what I think. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> so uh, how do you know if you're vigilant or not? Well, you know, if you're not vigilant, you won't know it. Yeah. If you're because vigilant. vigilance includes self-awareness. It includes situational awareness, surrounding awareness. And non-vigilance doesn't include awareness really on anything except probably what's going on in your that little voice that's rattling off in your head. Um, probably something you're stressing out about. So, uh, but what's going to drive you into vigilance? What's going to drive us into vigilance when we're very, very little is, well, we have the concept of the carrot and the stick. People do things supposedly for two reasons, and I'm not going to argue with that. Either it's to avoid pain or to increase pleasure. When we're little, most of what we do is an aim to uh, increase our pleasure. And as we get a little bit older, we start to learn about pain and punishment and all of that kind of stuff. And, uh, and we do more and more and more in our life to avoid the pain, including going to school, getting the education, all this, all you're getting into the system, basically learning everything that everybody else is learning, trying to fit in and measure up to that standard and hoping to compete for a good job when you get a little bit older and all of that. And we do that. We're initiated into that whole concept through mostly through pain avoidance, through partial, through maybe a little bit of carrot. Um, depending on the school you went to, the people you're around and your own natural tendencies toward education and, and getting in with the system would depend that. But at some point in your life, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you get, you got to wake up and realize that you need to get a job, right? You got to go out there and you got to get that job. And, and you know that if you don't get the job that you're not going to be able to pay your bills and whatever. Now you're trying to get the job with the credentials that you've got and you can't get the job. And there's a lot of, um, sort of pain drive going on here that's going to, irritate you probably, and hopefully drive you to wake up, take some control, start being a little bit more strategic and really managing yourself a lot better, becoming more self-aware, becoming more situationally aware of what it really takes to create success in life. And that relying on other people isn't really the best way to go. Contrary to a uh, sometimes popular belief, depending on who you talk to. Um, but that, that will drive us into vigilance. And when we're driven into vigilance because of that, because of letdowns, because of failures, because of things that we didn't expect, that is irritating. I mean, we are forced to wake up. That's like somebody coming in. You're, let's, say, let's say that it's uh, five o'clock in the morning and you're in the middle of the best dream you've ever had. And you're just having, I mean, you're just happy. You know, there's a small part of you that actually knows that you're dreaming and you're just enjoying it. It's like that really lucid time. And, you know, you're, you're dreaming, but you kind of know it. But even though you know you're dreaming, you can still take control of the dream. And you're doing, you know, you're flying like Superman. You're doing whatever the heck you want to do. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and um, and somebody comes in and starts trying to wake you up. And you know that they're trying to wake you up, but you want to stay dreaming, right? Mm -hmm. You want to stay happy. And it pisses you. By the time they get you woke up, you are flat pissed off. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I wait. I actually have a lot of lucid dreams at this point in my life, but I, I wait, I, I used to wait for those moments, man. I mean, I would be so stoked when I'd finally have one of those and then somebody never fails. Somebody comes in and wakes you up. Somebody starts jackhammering next to something happens. It takes you out of the zone and you're so pissed. Mm -hmm. See, that's like, um, pain driving you into vigilance. It's no good. And there's people that walk around for decades irritated as hell, just wanting to be left alone, want to go back to sleep, want to go back to that comfort zone. Because they're being forcibly brought up to the level of vigilance. Mm -hmm. And the other side of it is the carrot. 
So what's the carrot? Well, you go to you go to work at a job and they have a compensation plan and that's the carrot. But that isn't the only carrot. You know, as human beings, we have things that we're naturally interested in. We naturally gravitate towards. We have things that we um things that we feel motivated to do, things about the world we feel motivated to change. Uh we find purpose in our lives, but usually the purpose falls somewhere between reality being able to actually do something constructive with it, make money, be successful, and, you know, fairy tale land. And as a result of that, most of us get pretty serious and we end up doing what we think we're supposed to do in order to uh, try and create our success. Um, but the carrot side is where we want to be. We want to create a path and a life and a lifestyle for ourselves that has us on the path to chasing something that we desire. And it starts maybe with a small goal. But the small goal in and of itself, I mean, we can have a goal of losing a little bit of weight. We can have a goal of making some extra money. We can have a goal of that new car. But that goal really needs to fall into alignment with a much bigger picture. Because once you achieve that goal, you're going to be like one of the astronauts once they made it to the moon. Mm -hmm. What the hell else do you do after you do that? Well, they came back all depressed, didn't they? Yeah, well, they, they, they got a bit depressed after they came back. So um, so we don't want to do that. We want, we want to create a life. We want to create a bigger picture of upward spiraling success. And that means that our goal achievement kind of parlays upon itself. And one thing leads to a bigger thing, to a bigger thing, to a bigger thing. And if we get to a certain point with these goals, what all of that adds up to is something that's even bigger, better, more exciting. And um, when I got into personal development initially, I decided early on that the ultimate idea would become a person that can actually inspire and motivate and teach and train people the way the people that I was reading, the way those people were teaching and training, inspiring and motivating me. And not just from a place of knowledge, but more importantly, from a place of real world results, very unique, high level results that just most people in life will never get. Um. I wanted to be one of those people and coming from where I was coming from, that seemed like the biggest farthest away thing. But you know, one success at a time, one realization at a time, one moving forward at a time, you fast forward a number of years, 15, 16, 17, 18 years, however long it's been. Mm -hmm. And you're there, you're doing it. It's like, wow, but it's all a cumulative thing. But see, that's chasing the carrot on my own accord. That's me identifying my purpose. That's me identifying what I want to turn my life into, the things I want to stand for, the things I want to make more real for everybody else. I mean, when I was uh, working jobs, the thing I constantly saw is people are not happy with the success that they can create in the job and the uncertainty with the job. And I, I thought I would love to find something that puts me above that. I would love to find something that allows me to not be at the effect of all those negative things. And I would love to uh, ultimately be able to create something that would set other people free as well, at least if they're willing to do what it takes to be successful at that. And, uh, and, and that's something I was able to do. But that was a big, big, outrageous, big picture goal. That was long-term thinking. And, um, and that's my carrot driving me into vigilance. Now, see, it started out with pain driving me into vigilance because... No matter how hard I worked at the job, I couldn't get the promotion. I couldn't get the the money I needed to make. And that pain drove me into vigilance. But once I switched to more of a carrot drive, just, I ha and I'm still waking up to this. I need to wake up to the fact that I need to be vigilant in my life to be successful. But there's positive vigilance, and we're going to talk about this. There's positive vigilance where you're playing your game, you're having fun, you're going for a goal. Every little win is adding up to something bigger. And even if you have a setback, I'll tell you what, you're doing, you've got enough wins, you're gaining some momentum. You know, even with the setbacks that you're going to ultimately go somewhere and you start to get the, your basis of happiness and morale every day starts to revolve around the destination that you're heading toward, not the day-to-day -day strife that you're coming in contact with. And it's a much more balanced place to come from. So that to me is what's, what's coming up with the difference between being motivated into a vigilant state through pain or through your own accord through pleasure by embracing your purpose. So what's coming up for you on that, Rach? So, well, just so I'm wrapping my head around what you're talking about and for the guys listening as well. So basically you identified what your purpose was 
and then went about creating that through your daily actions, et cetera. How did you stumble across your purpose? Because I know that there'd be many people perhaps listening who aren't yet quite in tune. It's like, okay, well, that's all right, but I'm, I'm in a job that I'm, I'm not really enjoying right now or maybe a relationship that's not quite right or whatever it is. And it's like, you know what, what is my purpose? I still remember when I had these, I, I was asking myself these questions, how do I discover what my purpose is if I'm a little foggy in that area? That is a good question. Um, how do you find how do you find what your purpose is? Yeah, you get out there and you start looking around. It's like following a uh, following a, a trail. Easy for me to say, filing, Fo- following, following, following a, a trail, trail. Of, of breadcrumbs. My trail of breadcrumbs started with I am disappointed in the amount of money I make because things I'm passionate about I can't do anything. Um, and and I hate to admit, but it's superficial stuff for me, right? Right. I've, I've discovered that I'm not as superficial as I thought that I was, but you know, I, I wanted a cool car. I mean, ever since I was tiny, tiny little baby, if you've just tuned in, he's a redneck. I've, like I've always like, you... <laughs> I've like cool machines, cars, motorcycles, anything with a motor in it, basically. Yeah. Right. Yep. And I could never afford anything that was just even halfway cool. So that drove me to want to, I guess, play a bigger game when it comes to making money. But me, I've got limiting thinking. I'm a high school dropout. I am uh, had 23 jobs by the time I was 23 years old, and I was fired from almost every single one of them. And um, and I I really, I mean, you know, people people tell you about you, and they said, you know, you're lazy, and you're, I don't know if they are actually that rude and that blunt, but basically they were telling me I was lazy and need to get my crap together and need to have some discipline. And I would look at that, and I would say, all, all I could say is, wow, they're right. <laughs> and I don't know what to do about it because I can't. I mean, I try. I don't, I'm not trying to be a slacker. I'm, believe it or not, what, you know, going back to being 26 years old, whatever I was doing, this is me doing the best I can on every level. And it's still crap, right? Right. So, uh, so following, following the trail of breadcrumbs, what do you want? Well, I want more money. Superficial. You know what? Funny thing about superficial things is they'll lead to deeper things. Don't beat yourself up about being superficial and don't try and be too deep too quick. That's words of advice for me. Take it if you like it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Following a, a trail of breadcrumbs led me to want to make more money. Wanting to make more money had to have me open my mind. I tried to get jobs and, and, and roles that I wasn't familiar with playing, such as sales. And I applied for 100 sales jobs and, and couldn't get hired at any of them. I'm talking about being the guy behind the counter at the oil chain shop instead of the guy under the car. Right. I couldn't even get one of those jobs. And I had to say, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to start a business. But then that's hard and it's expensive and I didn't have any money. Um, and I, I kind of gave up on that. And then I got to the point that I'm like, you know, I just got to do something. I realized, I had a realization, whatever it is for me is something I don't even know about yet. So I better open my mind and I better be open to opportunity or whatever comes my way. Next thing I know, I got a friend invite me to some opportunity. And, uh, and I got started with, I became a very successful entrepreneur within about six months. I, I turned my annual income or my, yeah, my annual income into my monthly income. And then some. And a bit more than that. Um, and I could finally buy the cool car, right? But, the, but I opened my mind and the bit, I wasn't just going to do any business. The business I found it was a travel related business back at the time, but it kind of had this um, sidecar to it of personal development. You talk to the people that were in the business being successful. They're all excited about whatever travel product it was, discount travel. But what they were really seemed to be excited about was just the personal development, the leadership aspect of it. And I thought, man, that, that sounds, you know, I, I could definitely, I mean, I'm struggling and I don't know how to improve myself. So it definitely sounds good to me. And then, so I I found my first personal development book and I found some people that I resonated with on a different level, had different things in common with than I had with my other friends and and family. And I kind of, you know, you just, you got to get out there and you got to start pursuing whatever it is. And if you're not finding anything, it's just because your mind isn't open. One thing I've learned in life is no matter how bleak it can seem and how much it seems like you already got it all figured out and nothing can nothing good can change or happen. Whatever you need is out there. 
And and you just got to go looking for it and you got to open your mind up. That can be easier said than done. So you mentioned, Shane, finding the, the breadcrumbs or following the breadcrumbs to get in touch with your purpose and really to define and get clear on what your purpose is. So that could be as simple as, okay, what am I into? What do I really enjoy doing? And then following that path and then seeing somehow if you can turn that into your career because you know if you're if you're doing something that's in alignment with what you absolutely love then you will create success it may not happen completely overnight I mean Shane what you've been on the journey for 18 years or whatever it is mind you you did create success quicker quick took me a whole lot longer than it did him but once I got um in alignment with what I was really enjoying which was the personal development for me as well um boom success came as a result of that so align your profession with your passion i guess is another way to put it that's a very big thing and uh i mean that that you know it's get out there and discover some stuff you know start reading books that was the hardest thing for me to do ever start reading books um but i did it and um and you, it takes you to new things. Start meeting new people. You know, get your, you know, put yourself out there a little bit. Yeah, you got to get out of your out of your comfort zone for sure. Yeah. Okay. And um, so let's see. I got a little quote here. I, I didn't really set myself up for success here. What's that say? Winning isn't everything, but wanting to is. Yeah. Okay. So that's Vince Lombardi. He was a very successful um, American football coach. I'm not a big sports fan, but I love some of the quotes and some of the mentality and some of the thinking behind some of these coaches. It's just, it's just. So that's all about desire. It's just really how bad you want it, baby. That's right. That's for sure. So, um, so Vince Lombardi, he said, here's what comes up for me on that. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to is again, if you're not on your purpose, you're just hanging out, trying to have the superficial part of life, the day to day, be the thing that feeds you, the thing that makes you happy. And that is hard to do. I mean, if any of you guys just live a day-to-day life, you're not on any type of purpose, there's no bigger picture you're, you're going for, and you just wake up in the morning doing your thing. If you feel that that's keeping you in a really vigilant, happy, enthusiastic, vital place where you're alert, you're aware, you're, you're loving life, I mean, for some of you guys, you've already done the hard yards. You've already built something like a family and this or that, and you're and you're and you're you're loving it, but you're totally engaged in it. I'm not talking about normal standards on this stuff. I'm talking about, um, you know, it it, it just. I'm just talking about. Well, what am I talking about, Rach? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are you? Oh, talking just about? you know what I'm thinking about is the family is is the just the family side. You know, when you get to the when you get to that place from a, uh, when you get on track, like with family and having fun and doing the thing that you love to do with family. So many times in in the world that we live in, people look at you like, what are you doing? Why don't you have a goal? It's like, well, I did have a goal and I've achieved that goal and I'm living in the midst of it. It's like an entrepreneur that built a super successful business. It's like Steve jobs, um, built Apple computers Mm -hmm. and he's going to work every day and it is all working, right? He's going to work every day and it is all working. And it's not really a lot of hard work, but you do that in a family. And not always everybody can really wrap their head and realize what you've actually created there. And that can be a very awesome thing. So that, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is um, just that desire, that wanting to create something. And you may have already done, you might be living in it. And to me, the, the litmus test is, am I able to stay vigilant? So if, you're, in, in if you this. are in alignment with your with your purpose and you're on on path with that it's it's not difficult at all to be motivated it's like it's just, just trying try and stop me from getting up early and staying up late and actually I mean Shane and I we work together and we play together and it's it's always business we're always talking about business whether we're out at dinner or we're going here or we're going there uh, I mean Leia's in here she's like oh, I'll just do a, a prosperity with your mom or like you know prosperity pulse little message and you know so Leia's into it as well so it's a real I mean it's like what else are we going to do um, but it doesn't feel like work to me it feels like play which is why it's it's you know it's easy to do it every single day um it's not like oh i've got to do this again it's like yay i get to do this again which is um which is awesome so if you're not feeling that then uh it may be okay let me let me reevaluate and see if i can align you know what i'm doing most of the time which for most of us is is our work 
let me align that to what I'm most passionate about, whatever it happens to be. It might be, it might be yoga. Um, you know, it might be, you know, that's the thing that I'm most passionate about. And I want to go and be a, a yoga instructor and be the best, best, best yoga uh, instructor that I can possibly be. So whatever it is for you, um, find it, align with it, and um, you'll create success and a whole lot of happiness. And, you know, that's a great point. But, it, you know, to me, it's like, you know, becoming a yoga instructor and getting good at yoga is probably one step on a greater path. Right. Why? Why do you want to do that? Well, I want to do that because I myself have suffered physically and don't feel like I've really had the mind, body, spirit connection that I want to have. And I feel like I've, I've, I've missed out on a part of life. And now that I'm doing that, I can really see the value of that. And I want to become an instructor because I want to share that with other people. Now the purpose is to share it with other people. So I got to be the embodiment of it, the demonstration of, of what you can do with it. But at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of different ways you can share that with other people. You can open your own yoga studio. You could do yoga YouTube videos. I mean, there's a whole level that you could get to and keep climbing a ladder. And it's going to take you on a journey, right? It's going to take you on a journey of learning new things and accomplishing new goals. And it's a never ending journey that you can continue to get better and better at and have more and more successes and wins. You start meeting other people that are well known in the space and masterminding with those people, creating retreats, whatever it is. Yeah. You just embody it. You embrace it. And if it's your purpose, I mean, you, you won't be able to stop yourself. Your, your mind will be ticking over all the time and coming up with different ideas about how you can create and make it bigger and better. And it'll be feeding your, 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 your soul, if you will, um, the deeper you go with it. Yep. And, and that's the key. I mean, that's the carrot, you know, you've, you've embraced the carrot. Now, when you have a setback and you're cruising down the road in your life and something negative happens, and you know what your purpose is, you know, whatever it is, you could probably still continue to make some strides toward your purpose. So you're able to stay in a much happier place. So people, they say people without a purpose perish. perish. And I would certainly um, agree with that because I, in my own life, when I'm on purpose, I'm happy. And there's intensity. Here's the thing. We start out with the word vigilance because there's intensity because things happen and you're excited, but you're afraid and you're trying new things. You're way outside the box and things go right and things go wrong. And, you know, and at the end of the day, it's, it's all a bunch of scary stuff. But if you're doing it to chase your carrot, it's all worth it. If you're doing it to avoid the pain, to try and stay ahead and you're in the confusion and you're trying to follow the path of the masses and all of that, you know, it's, it's, it's not rewarding enough. It's not rewarding enough to keep your attention. It's like trying to pay attention to a boring movie. If you're watching a movie that's boring or even painful to watch and there's going to be a test at the end of it, your vigilance is so low, even if you're going to take a beating for the, if you don't pass the test, I like to think in extremes, even if you're going to take a beating, if you don't pass the test, that's going to be the, the punishment. Um, um, you know, you, oh, I mean, that's, that's the key. If it doesn't mean enough to you, you'll just, the first challenge that, that comes your way and there will be a whole bunch of challenges on the pursuit of uh, happiness to success, et cetera. Um, if you're not following your purpose and that challenge presents itself, you'll be, you know, all ready to, to quit and, you know, head in another direction, so to speak. Whereas if you're on track following your purpose, I mean, that challenge is like, bring it, baby, bring it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I'll get uh, I'll get the synchronicity down here with our switching back and forth here in a minute. I See, thought you I were done. I have no idea who's on screen right now and who's not. The one on your right is oh, okay. the one that's on All the right. screen. Gotcha. So, uh, so, but that's in, it's it's being fully engaged. How do you become fully engaged? You know, all of our kids go to school, and oh, your kids ADD, and your kids this, and your kids that. You know, a big part of that, a big part of that is just is the kid engaged? Is the kid interested in in what's going on in front of them? But as grownups, we're exactly the same way. And if we're not creating a life and if we're not chasing some things in our life that fully are capable of, of engaging our intention, we're not going to be vigilant and we're constantly going to be prodded by the universe, by whatever's going on in our life. There's constantly going to be things that are sneaking up on us and with the ability to cause us some damage and some harm. And it's going to require us to get vigilant when we really don't want to. And we, we experience that as stress. You know, we don't want to be in a stressful place. We want to be in a place where we're having fun and, you know, you're, you're kicking butt and taking names, not, um, not just trying to stay ahead of, uh, ahead of whatever. So, so let's, let's look at this. So your purpose, um, let's think about your purpose. You know, that's what we're really talking about is, is sort of discovering that purpose. And you know what we, in fact, we have talked about that quite a bit. So, um, 
Rach, um, at this point in your life, what would you, do you have, uh, have you really thought about exactly what your purpose is and can you put it like in a brief uh, statement? Mm. You know, it started off my, my purpose, my driving force was absolutely to establish um, independence for myself um, through success in business. That's where it started. I didn't want to be reliant on anybody else but me. And for me, how that came, you know, how that was manifested, if you will, was by creating success for myself in business. And from there, it, it's, well, and that's still a big driving force without a doubt. Um, it just so happened that personal development aligned with that. So it's being the demonstration myself, continuing to be the student with personal development and being perhaps a little bit of an inspiration for others to get on this path of feeding their mind and letting them know that, hey, you know what, your only limit is your imagination. You can do whatever it is that your heart desires. Um, and I guess waking people up to that, raising the vibration of the planet um, so that we can all be happier. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, but that's, I think we kind of derail ourselves because we try and package our purpose and we think it should be this neat, tidy thing. Um, I can find a theme throughout my life where I can start to really understand what my purpose is, but my purpose has definitely evolved. It's the progressive happiness or the success is Earl Nightingale said it's success is the, the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Mm -hmm. So is happiness. I mean, it's a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. And part of it is just the unfolding of starting to really realize what your purpose is and, and how to how to really express that. So I think at the end of the day, I mean, we all really we're very similar. You know, we want the same things. We want to be happy. We want to be healthy. We want our loved ones to be happy and healthy. Uh, we want to have relationships that, you know, are deep in our heart. Um, we want to be respected and admired. And uh, yeah, just that's I mean, we're all the same like that. Right. We want to. Yeah. All of those things in a really cool car, maybe some cool motorcycles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you're right though. On a deep level, there's there's a lot of things we haven't, and we're gonna kind of hit that in just a second here. So, um, so here's the okay. So, um, the the uh, the 21st century. Um, where where are you going, Rach? <laughs> Don't we have people that will handle that? Okay. The doorbell. The doorbell is ringing, and Rach is running off to answer I the doorbell. I, I, think, I, actually, I think we've my, got people. We do have people we have downstairs. People, my, my, my brain was like, oh my gosh, that's Leia calling us, right? I didn't quite figure out that it was the doorbell until well, we, it was too we've, late. We've got a house full of, uh, you know, staff. <laughs> we do. And so, we've got a house full of kids downstairs yeah. too. Leia finishes school early on a Friday. So she's got a couple of their little buddies over um, and they're tearing up downstairs right. <laughs> anyway. So let, let's move on. So uh, Drive, Daniel Pink, Daniel Pink, 21st century author. He knows a little bit about happiness. He knows a little bit about what it really takes for people to succeed and be on purpose. Um, I, I, I love referring to this book. And he basically talks about the need to be in flow. And part of the part of getting into flow, you get to the point where you're not thinking about what you're doing. Um, you're not all up in your head and you're just you're just in the groove. You're in the moment. You're making it happen. And that's when we do our best work. Statistically, your productivity goes through the roof. When, uh, when you get into this place of flow, your creativity goes through the roof. Your joy goes through the roof. Your happiness, all of this stuff Success, it all comes about from getting in the flow. Great book. It talks about, you know, really what it takes and the difference and all that of being in flow or not. But you know what? What we're talking about here also sort of is a formula. We're going to give you guys a bit of a formula to get more and more in the flow. And you're not going to get in the flow doing things that you have to do, quote unquote, have to do. You get in flow doing things that you're that fulfills you. And granted, you might have to get a little bit creative to figure out how to make what fulfills your heart. Also put food on the table, but that's part of the game of life. And it's something that we all have to figure out. So um, it, it's, just, it's just part of the thing there. So we want to get into this place of flow and, um, and, and that's, and, and that's, that's just a big key, but it's happiness. It's, it's, th th this is an importance of, of, of happiness. If you want to be more successful, if you want things to be easier, if you want to have more joy. If you want to gain the respect of more people, I mean, it's, it's just all a, an upward spiral with that. And, um, and the next thing here, Abraham, uh, Maslow, the, uh, 19th slash 20th century philosopher, dude, um, he talks about the hierarchy of needs and, um, and it's interesting because you could say the pursuit of success is also the pursuit of happiness and the pursuit of survival is also the pursuit of happiness because when we're surviving really well, in a way that suits us, we tend to be a bit more happy 
than when we feel like everything's uh, falling apart around us. So that at the very bottom of the hierarchy of needs, the first thing that we have to, to uh, really focus on as human beings is our physical needs, food, water, oxygen, shelter, you know, things of, of this nature. Right. And if, and if we don't have these things in place, then, um, you know, it's very difficult for us to, uh, have any other desire when you're starving to death or when you have no water or no oxygen, even more importantly, mm -hmm. you don't really care so much about the other things. But once you get that in place, you know, the next thing that you really want is belonging. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be a part of a group. Yep. And have you ever seen kids that uh, actually become part of groups that really don't hold the same values? Certainly. You, you yourself, have you ever been a part of a job or a group that really doesn't have the same values you do? They don't have the same beliefs. They don't have the same thinking. But it's a whole hell of a lot better than being alone, right? Right. So the next thing we need to be is a part of a part of a group. From there, it really comes down to um, just our own sort of. So we naturally seek these out, of course, right? The, the in terms of survival, food, water, etc. It's our natural instinct to seek those things out in order to survive and be happy. The connectedness to the group. It's a, is it is this what is this what this guy's saying? It's a natural. Everyone has it a desire to want to actually connect to other human beings, and that's the next one up on the the rung. That. Yep. 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 <laughs> that, <laughs> That's exactly right. So, right. but the, basically the bottom line is, is as you start to climb this ladder, mm -hmm. you start to get a little bit more finicky. Right. It isn't enough just to survive and it isn't enough just to belong to the group. Now you're, now you're starting to look for people that you're, you're starting to, you know, the next step from there is you want to start to really discover yourself. You want to start to understand yourself and your own values and your own, you know, purpose and this stuff starts to come into play. So if you're listening to this, you're probably at least at that point. So big congratulations for that. But the funny thing is, is once we get to that next step where we start to really want to understand ourselves, which really is building our own self-esteem. Once we really get to that point, um, we want to feel better about ourselves. Sometimes that means that the groups that we're a part of or some of the ways that we're going about fulfilling our physical needs might not really be in alignment with who we want to be. Right. The, the version of us that we're going to feel the best about. And that means that you got to go backwards and go, holy crap, for me, it's like, well, I got to change what I do for a living. And I also got to change some of the relationships that I have, um, or at least create some new relationships that are going to support me on this new journey that I'm on. So, uh, so it can, you know, one step forward, two steps back mm -hmm. can be the name of the game as you start to go through this. And that can kind of, on the surface, that can seem like it can rob you of your happiness. So how to find happiness, once you start to see the vision, I love vision boards. And once you start to see that vision, and especially once you start to meet some other people that resonate with you on that vision, on that mission, your happiness is no longer tied to a lot of the things that it was. And, and it starts to become more tied to the journey of where you're going than what's happening to you right now. So what do they say that the, the happiness... Um, or your attitude is 90% um, your thinking and only 10% circumstance. They've done, they've done tests. Um, happiness is only 10% of your circumstances. The other 90% is, are things like attitude. Mm -hmm. What you're thinking about. So you could be living in the biggest mansion in the world, um, but not, not happy, right? Um, it's what's going on up here. Or you could be living in a, a shack on the beach and be, Ecstatic. <laughs> That's right. And there's plenty of people that become very, very successful. So their physical needs are met. But now when they're starting to really figure out who they are, um, you know, I mean, okay, we belong to the group. We've gained some esteem from some other people. But now we're really trying to work on ourselves and our own self. How do we feel about us? Who cares what other people feel about us? How do I feel about myself? Now, all of a sudden, the way I've been making my money at this point might not be really where I want to be. And that's, that's a scary thing. And, 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 and now all of a sudden you're wanting to make some changes and you've got family and you've got other people and those other people might be a little freaked out too. So it's, it, it's an, you know what, probably about the biggest game somebody can play in their life is, is the pursuit of happiness. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not a small thing. It's a big thing. And, uh, but, but at the end of the day, the thing that I keep going back to is the universe is going to require me to be vigilant if I'm going to survive. 
Do I want to be vigilant on my own accord because I'm chasing a big carrot that I'm excited to catch? Or do I want to be constantly prodded into vigilance because I'm living a life that doesn't have me engaged? I can't pay attention as deeply as I should be because I'm just too bored. I'm not into it. I can't fake it. I can a little bit, but not that much. You know, what, what am I, what am I going to do? At some point we got to kind of switch gears and start to go this, go in a direction that's more fulfilling, even if it's just a part-time hobby thing that you do. You know, you don't have to change your whole life. If you get things that are working really well and you don't want to rock the boat, developing something in your life that does give you that joy and that passion and something hopefully that you can build into bigger and bigger things is just a really big key. Then, then you know, we get to the point where, you know, you, the top of the pyramid here is self-actualization and self-actualization is the reward. That's why I was talking about driving force in your life has been to create a certain kind of family and, and, and certain level of success within the family. And you hit it and it's happening and you're living in it and you're reveling in it and you are vigilant. You're on purpose. You're having fun. It's, it's exciting. It's intense, but it's all good. Right. Man, that's self-actualization. Same thing for somebody like Steve Jobs when he hit his pinnacle of, of his business career and I'm sure family and other things as well. Um, you know, there's that point that we get to and we are who we are is being expressed in everything that we do. We're not a sellout for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to share with you guys the terms I use for myself in my own head. Am I being a sellout here? Just to earn a paycheck. It might be, and that's okay, right? Maybe depends on how big of a sellout, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and all this stuff, but you know, I might be in a sellout in different parts of my life. And the more I am not, and the more every part of my life is just feeding me because it's, I'm fully engaged. I'm fully into it, fully into it. I'm full, it fully represents who I am, but this is the game of life to create that. And it can take decades to get there, but every little step along the way can be a very rewarding and fun step. And, and if you're on that journey, if you are on that journey and you and, and something bad happens to you, you can shake it off and it's remarkable how quickly you can sort of just get over it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there might be people listening who are like, you know what, far out. I'm um I'm however old I am. I'm forty something, I'm fifty something, I'm sixty something, and I'm not yet on my path. You know, I'm not in alignment with my purpose. And that's okay. Um, like you said, I think to um, to start off really small and just find your passion, whatever it is that you're into, and uh, and start off on that path, even just a little tiny bit, that will feed you, um, give you some energy, and allow other things, bigger things, to actually start coming to fruition. And you often say to me, Shane, time is my ally. So however age you are, and whatever you know path you're on, and whatever part of the the journey you're on, you might be just getting started right now today um, or maybe you haven't even started yet well I guess you've started because you're here listening to a conversation such as this but um, allow time to be your ally no matter how old you are because it's never too late I mean who was the Kentucky Fried Chicken yeah, Colonel Sanders Colonel Sanders how, yeah. how old was he when he actually he was got like 65 or something purpose? when he started yeah yeah Kentucky Fried Chicken yeah. so um so I agree you know one of the things I definitely always consider time to be my ally um you know, maybe that gets harder the older you get, but I tend to take a more spiritual point of view on life. Just, you know, I'm an infinite being, whether that's true or not, I guess I'll find out here at some point. Yep. But even if it's not, I think it gives me a lot more clarity, a lot more bigger picture thinking, a lot of things, it, you know, even if, even if negative, you know, I've had life threatening situations take place in my life and to try and find just peace of mind and balance with that. Yeah, it's, it's just easier for me to kind of consider life from that point of view. And from my, my reality is, 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 you know, that, that's what I, that's what I experience. That's what I believe. That's what it is. Um, and you know, and that allows me to, if I know that time is my ally and I'm not working against the clock, which is the, the, the worst enemy you could have time is your enemy is the worst enemy you could have because it is relentless. You know, it allows me to, to get some peace of mind. I also kind of believe this because it, it gives me more correct perception in my estimation. So I can sit down and I can read a book, for instance, and that's on my purpose, being in this conversation of success, even if it's a fiction book, but the, but the author in the book, and there's certain themes that I actually, you know, really tie into, I can sit there and I can read this book and I can be so rewarded in that, that, um, you know, that I, uh, 
I mean, I'm on my, I'm in the, the it, I mean, I'm engaged. I'm engaged, right? And and I'm I'm a part of, it isn't about destinations. It's just about being on the journey. And when you stop looking at time as your enemy, you can be happy being on the journey. And the reality is, is that there is no destination and there's no arrival point. It's either you're on the journey or you're not. If you're on the journey, you can start feeling good now. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's one of the things I learned a while back that just gave me so I don't have to wait until to be happy. I can be happy right now. As soon as I know I'm on the journey, I can be happy. That's it, yeah. And, and if I go a little bit too long without taking a step on that journey, I'm less happy. But I can just pick up a book and read a little bit of a book and I'm back on the, I'm back on the path and on the journey and I'm happy again. I can do a couple of practices, which I want to share with you guys. We're, we're going to go ahead and move on to this next step here. Some practices that you can do that will actually allow you to feel like you're taking steps down your path on your journey and if you're doing practice, if you have a, if you build a practice in life and you follow the practice in life, you just ha- you know, you're on purpose. You're going toward a bigger picture vision and happiness is a natural byproduct of it. And for me, doing my practices is how I find happiness in my life. In order to do a practice, I've got to have, I've got to have a purpose. I've got to have some vision. And these things are all unfolding. So there's even a path to find these things. As long as I'm on those paths, I'm fine. Um, And and, and it builds upon itself. The farther you go, the more happiness that you actually find that there is. Uh, And once again, even through uh, setbacks. And if time's your ally, it allows you just to be fully patient. Because I tell you what, whatever it is that you might be pursuing, it's going to take longer than you think it is. <laughs> At least that was, that's been my experience in a lot of the books that I read um, of others creating success. It always takes longer than you think. It always costs more money than you think. And it always requires a bit more of you to dig deep than you thought initially that it would. But it's so worth it if it's in alignment with your overall purpose. So just go for it. That's right. So here is, here's, you know, define your practice. Define your practice. Decide on a practice and just do it. I've got a few practices in my life. And as we go through this, I'll share with you. But do something you love. Do something you love. I love I love to do a lot of things that I'm yet to be very good at. Um, but I, I, I some little hobbies. And, um, you know, I bought, a, I bought a, a drone and I fly this thing around and take video with it and whatever. It's, it's cool. We live out here in, in, a, in a very secluded area and, and, and it's fun, right? It's just fun for me and create little videos, stuff like that. Have, it's, have a little it's, bit of, uh, it's often, babe, I'm going to get the drone <laughs> because it's, it's, it's over the field. <laughs> it's hit the cow in the head, the horses. I don't know. <laughs> that was the first drone. <laughs> it was, it wasn't worries? as, it wasn't as reliable as my new one. Let's not talk about where that is. <laughs> it's not as re- the new one. I have yet to, um, actually I haven't seen the new one. Knock on wood. The new one, the new one's out in the garage. Okay. I, I've yet to, uh, have the, the new one crash and have to go actually hunting for it. But anyways, looking at time here, All right. do something you love, do something you love every day. I love to read books. I love to make little videos and play around with, with just, you know, video and stuff like that. That's what we're doing here. Right. Um, I love to train people. I love to talk about personal development. I love to strategically plan business, do something you love to do every day and make it a priority in your life that more and more of your day is going to be able to be spent doing things that you love. So, uh, so that's a practice, but see it as a practice, commit to it every day. Gratitude, pay gratitude. Um, you know, we talk about, and some of the things that we do journaling about what you're grateful about. You know, I've been journaling about what I'm grateful about since 1998. And I don't do that as often as I do a lot of the other things, but I really make up for it on my other practices. But you know what, if I'm ever feeling like I'm not as happy as I want to be, that's a go-to thing. Journal about what, just take 20 minutes and write down some stuff that you're talking, write down something that happened that you thought was great and just write in as much detail as you can. It'll snap you right out of the crap and uh, raise that happiness level. And it's amazing once that happens, how great that is. Something we do, we do live seminars around the world. One of the things we do is called random acts of kindness. We've been doing this for, what, about five years yeah. now? Yep. And it is unbelievable how happy people get going out and doing random acts of kindness. I mean, we're talking about mopping floors for people. We're talking about washing feet. I mean, we've done some crazy, crazy stuff. 
we were, the first time we did this was in Tahiti and we broke up into groups and one of the groups, I think there was about eight people in the group, they actually met um, a village person in Tahiti who was about to lose their house and they all ponied up and ended up saving this person's house. The government was going to take it or something because they hadn't paid certain levies, et cetera, had been in the family for like 100 or 200 years and it was, it was relatively speaking, it was a small amount of money. It was a huge amount of money for the person there, like the village lady, um, and then they end up coming to our hotel and doing this huge, um, what do you call that thing? Like um, they gave gifts and they did a big show, like of, of gratitude, expressing their gratitude. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it was awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. It was, it, was, it was so. We've had just the most unbelievable experiences doing random acts of kindness. We've actually organized random acts of kindness events around, and it's just, ah, oh, man, it's awesome. Very, very cool stuff. So uh, next thing is uh, meditation. I, I choose to do meditation in my yoga practice as a moving meditation. Um, do here's the thing, you know, people say, Oh, you should do this kind of meditation. You should do that thing. kind of, everybody has their shoulds. I don't have shoulds. Do what makes you happy. Do what works for you. Uh, I'm the most should free person. I think you will ever meet because that's the way I live my life. I don't follow other people's rules. I follow what I do that works for me. And you like it, you don't like it. It doesn't really matter to me because it works for me. Except when it comes to breakfast, right? You really should make some breakfast. <laughs> I'm just mucking around. He actually doesn't do that. I, I don't I don't know what you're talking about there. Um, <laughs> I've actually got a full-time chef anyway. Yeah. You still make breakfast though I sometimes. do still make breakfast. Yeah, I, do. I, I like getting in the kitchen. But, so uh, yeah. so let's move right along here. So meditation, whether it's a couple minutes a day, you know what? I'm not going to tell you to meditate. Go, go look it up. But I do yoga as a meditation. It's a moving meditation. It's a meditation because I'm not driving my body. I'll just share this with you guys real quick. I'm not driving my body. I am asking my body to do certain things and I'm asking my body to show me the way. And that is a, a level of mindfulness and meditation for me that it hits exactly the right spot, the right buttons. And I'm done with a yoga class and I am on all. I am calm. I am confident. I'm in flow. Whatever monkey chatter was going on in my mind is just gone. And it leads me to the next thing, which is exercise. It's also great exercise. So I'm killing like two birds once. Exercise makes you happy. Um, it's a great practice. If you do as a practice, it, it, it definitely makes you happy. If you exercise, a more intense workout will actually make you even happier. So keep raising the bar a little bit within boundaries, not to give yourself a bunch of injuries. And once again, I'm working against myself. So what's this bottom one here? Mindfulness. You know, all these things probably should be done with a little bit of uh, mindfulness, but mindfulness is great. I, I use mostly when I use mindfulness, mindfulness is just really paying attention to what you're doing. Um, it's just being really aware of what you're actually doing, like yoga. Um, so you're I, consciously creating. I'm not just trying to force my body into a position. I'm mindful with my body. And I'm actually, I'm asking for feedback from my body and asking my body to actually guide me. That is such a massive win that I had when that actually clicked into my mind on, on how to do that. Um, but I'm very mindful. I'm open. I'm receiving. I'm receiving the messages and the signals from what's happening around me, including from my own body. But mindfulness with eating. You want to lose weight? Become very mindful with eating. The best advice I got was actually reading a book from Deepak Chopra. And he said, eat three times a day, which I eat like five or six times a day. So I don't really follow that. But he said on a scale of one to 10, eat till you're a six and then stop. That's gold right there. That that's, that's a great thing. And be mindful while you eat, pay attention to the chewing, to the food, to the taste, to the texture, be mindful with that and allow your body to, to get in tune with your body, allow your body to tell you what it's enjoying, what it needs more of, wants more of, and when it's done. And I, I really discovered that I was ignoring a stop eating signal which for me arrived at about a six where, where Deepak said it would arrive. And that was a game changer for me with, with uh, controlling my weight, but it all is under, uh, it all falls under mindfulness. And if, and if you develop any of these practices in your life and start with one and then just expand it to more, um, you definitely start to, to find the happiness that you're looking for. But the byproduct of the happiness typically is a lot more success getting into the state of flow and all that. So with that, that's pretty much what I have for you guys. I just want to turn over to you, Rach. Um, you're somebody that has definitely created a lot of success and you're a student of personal development. You're somebody that um, you had desires. You strove to get those desires. You worked on yourself. 
you worked on whatever the area of your life was, you've fed your mind, you've learned new things. I mean, you're the real deal. You're the person that's actually created an amazing life. Any last uh, words of advice or tidbits or things that are coming up for you you want to share with her before we uh, before we move on? Thanks, Shane. I think just uh, remind yourself how uniquely amazing you are, wh- wherever you happen to be in your life. I, uh, I was pursuing success um, in business and hit rock bottom, failed miserably five years in, and it nearly took me out, so to speak. I'd lost my way, didn't know where to turn. And, uh, and it, interestingly enough, it was answering a little ad that uh, led me to personal development, more of it. And I'd been on that journey since I was 19 and it reignited that vision that I had for myself. So wherever you're at, just get in tune with that vision, with your purpose and know that it, the more that you feed your mind uh, and follow these little instructions of, of, you know, cultivating a practice one at a time, um, that's all you got to do. Just putting one foot in front of the other and, and just going for it essentially. And I will do a little bit of a plug for yoga because I was someone, Shane introduced me to yoga and it took a little bit to get me to the mat the first time. I was someone who thought that, oh, it's, you know, it's for old people and it's, you know, more about you know just meditating and not moving so much and this that and the other I end up throwing up my first two yoga classes because it was that difficult but I've had so many benefits uh, mind body spirit benefits from getting on that mat it's unbelievable and I would like to thank I mentioned sort of at the start of the call I've got a little um, message up here from a dear old friend of mine we used to work well we worked on reception years and years ago like uh, I don't know how old am I can I say like for 20 20 something years ago I think this was it was a, it was a long time ago uh, and Michelle um, she watched the show last week Michelle Forrest in Sydney and she says Rach I can tell you my week has been very positive and things have happened I didn't imagine because of watching and listening and learning thank you kiss so Mitch so pleased that you plugged in and I know I've gotten so many messages emails I've got another one here from Nat I haven't seen Nat in like five years and she says I just want to say I'm grateful for the podcast it picked up my day nat kiss kiss and uh, so guys keep the messages flowing up to us Uh, we love receiving them and uh, yeah jump onto the blog jump onto our youtube channel as well and yay thanks for your listening we'll be back next week what are we talking about next week shane next week we are talking about how to avoid negative thoughts this is a very powerful conversation Mm, and there's definitely some things you want to know about this because This is the name of the game. This is like getting your hands on the controls of life to be able to not be at the effect and and not have those negative thoughts constantly plaguing you or or influencing you in in undue ways. So that's what we're talking about. That's cool. The monkey chatter. Let's get on the other side of that. Fantastic. So thanks for your listening, guys. This has been Born to Prosper. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Thanks, Thanks, everyone.